Good evening and welcome to our 6 p.m. service. This evening, the bereavement group of the People's Cathedral will be presenting to you journeying through widow, widowhood. On this, our 11th anniversary, we are endeavoring to have a support group to widows and widowers within our group to share with us some of the journey this evening we have we have brother Drew Simmons sister Leona Lampkin brother Matthew Davis and to give words of encouragement and help from the word of God is sister Gloria Keynes she has also been on this journey. She is a teacher of 40 years, a mother of two, and we are happy to have her this evening with us. Our prayer is that this session will minister to those who are making this journey at this time. And we pray that what we present will be a source of strength and encouragement to you. God bless you as you listen and as you participate. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening thanking you for another opportunity to present you, Jesus Christ, as the only answer to every situation and every challenge that we face in life. Father, we ask your blessing upon the presenters. We pray, God, that you will minister through them to everyone who is hurt and bereaving at this time. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will guide and direct this evening's presentation as we place it in your hands. In Jesus' precious name, Amen. Hi, my name is Matthew, as Pastor Gill indicated. I was married for nearly 17 years. Um, I'm a father of two. My wife died in 2017, and uh, I'm here to share what that has been like walking with the Lord since then. My name is Leona Lamkin. My husband's name was Hollybert Lamkin. He passed away 2019, September 11. Married for 18 years. My name is Drew Simmons. Um, my wife Margot died on this 17th of March 2013, 44 days short of our 48th wedding anniversary. Um, and I have three sons, Kerry, Andre, and Christopher. The concerns that I experienced after my wife passed was, like, for me, it was every single thing. Because she was involved in every aspect of everything that I did. You know, work, leisure, errands, we did everything. She had some sort of involvement, impact, advice to give. You know, as wives, Drew, you would know, as, as wives go, our wives like to advise. True, right? true, true, true. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's good, to, it's good to listen to your wife sometimes because we men, we, we don't know everything. That's you know? Absolutely. That is life, yeah, that is life. So, yeah, yeah but, so my... my I would have to say every single thing because I wasn't sure how to deal with the children, how to go to work. And that is very, it was very what, hard. What I was going to do, you know. That was very hard. So. If it was, if it was a woman, you want, but a man is very hard. The same thing for me that mm -hmm. you say that your wife was there for you and everything. The same thing for my husband. He was there for me. Up to now, I still miss him because it's just early and that I lose him. And when I look around, I'm going through the court and different things. You know, he was there from head to toe. In the garden, the last when my husband died, the last thing he did for me was to 
trained the overlock machine for me. I saw depend upon him training that overlock machine. Call him to the bedroom to shred it, and he just rest his head and see his head was hurting. And we had a beautiful conversation that morning with one of my workers there, and he had breakfast and everything. And around 11 o'clock, I was getting ready to go to town, and then my husband asked me, well, I'm going to get to my husband. He just, he just, Close his eyes and that was it. You, you didn't even see the vit, you know, you see when the breath lift you didn't see nothing leave. But he was gone. I just scream and scream till I couldn't scream anymore. But it is a it's a hard task. It's a hard task. It's not easy. But with the help of God, I want to say that God gives me the strength. He's still giving me the strength because sometimes it's tough and rough. But God is there for me. He said he will never leave me nor never forsake me. And there's a song that says, if I lose if I lose my husband, if I lose my mom, my dad, my fam, I lose a good set of people around me, my father, my mother, my brother, my son, I went through so much. But I thank you to God that I know Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I know when I'm alone, he's there for me. He's giving me the strength every day to go on because it's not easy with someone and then boom, the just gone. So that I, I want to go out and see people like the bums out there don't have no wife, they don't have anything in life, and they just dead. Why did God didn't take them? Why did God take my husband? You know? I, but I don't, I didn't want to question God about I live it, you know. Um, but it's a great, it's, a, it's something. It's, we, it's we horrible. Can't, we, we can't question God. Right. Can't at all you can't? These things. And quite frankly, my experience was very similar. M my wife, in actual fact, had been ill for quite a prolonged period of time. Um, and to be honest with you, it's hard to say, but sometimes when you have a loved one, uh, and in my circumstances, there would have been times where you say, oh Lord, you know, why has she got to go through this? Sometimes you wish that the Lord would literally take her in order to, to spare her yeah. what you, you are imagining. True. So that her passing was a matter of bewilderment, uh, uh, a significant loss, yes. uh, as you said, you, you, you're shattered. Mm -hmm. And no matter how much you may have anticipated it, True. the reality yeah. of death. You've got to live with it. And uh, that is where our faith is tested. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we have to give so much thanks to God, to God yes. for his intervention and True. his bearing us up in, in the difficult, difficult stages. Amen. Thanks to God, yes. Mm -hmm. Thanks to God. But well, that's very that's very true because like for me like I said I didn't know what to do and I just threw myself if you can say that way I threw myself at the Lord's feet I said I said I do not know how to stand how to sit how to turn you have to do everything for me you have to show me everything every step and he's done that he's done that with work with the children with yes, myself yes, how yes. to how to combat the emotions yes. the feelings of loss true you know he, he's, he's been there he's taught me these lessons mm -hmm. by holding on to his word amen amen and being, being being grounded in his word for sure mm -hmm. has made a big difference mm -hmm. you know the effect of the loss of Margot was tremendous and um, you know you you didn't want to eat you, you I, I, I lost the will to do anything um, as I said you, you you anticipate sometimes you long for relief but when that relief comes you, you're in a different world altogether um, I, let me say this to you that she died in a, in a nursing home and when she had come out of hospital, she was first we brought her home okay. because we felt that she had a stroke. Um, she was very heavily incapacitated. Wow. But we felt that if we brought her home, that she would live longer. She, the, the environment, you know, yes. would be an inspiration to her. But then my sons realized that one day they, they took the decision that mommy had to be put in, into a nursing home. Okay. And they were very hesitant to tell me about it at all. Wow. And I remember well the morning that they came and said, you know, Dad, we've had a meeting, we're putting Mum in a nursing home. 
and we didn't involve you because we know you wouldn't have agreed. Yes. But we feel that if we don't do this, we will have two, two of you to look Sorry, after. Yeah. And indeed, that was that was, was very true. And when she died, yes, um, there was that that situation. I, I wasn't eating. I I, I lost weight. Um, I suppose that I, I tried to brave it out. Uh, and I, I will say to you at this point in time that I am very much indebted to the People's Cathedral because it was Pastor Gill who reached out to me and invited me to come to the bereavement the group. Amen, yes. And that experience made a fantastic change in my life and my being. I, I became more myself after I was able to share my, my sorrows oh. and to have the, the spirit of, uh, of a support from, from the members of the group. And um, it, it, it completely transformed my life. Yes. But yes, I was depressed. I, I, I lost weight. Um, as I said, I lacked the will to do almost anything. anything. Yeah. I, I don't know what your, your experience yeah, might have been. As a human being, that would happen. Yeah. Just like me. When I lose my husband. Before my husband was sick, it's like, he in the ward, my mother downstairs, but like this, like this, like this. Tell me get home, just but also and then rush for him. I didn't take any food or nothing like that. I can I didn't spend any time for myself. But when he did pass away, you now it hit me. It was a big blow for me. Because you, you, you know your mind, you can't sleep, you toss here and there and there. Sometimes you can sleep all two o'clock, three o'clock. When it's time to get out, you want to sleep, get a little two hours, three hours and up. Because you know, you just you just see folks in, in front of me all the time, or till now. I mean last night. He might went slip out something the tree and get about six o'clock. Still, it, it's still on my mind. It's still on my heart because they love my husband. But true love, if you truly love your husband, you're gonna miss him. You got to, and we got to live with that till we die. Because it's something go through your mind, your heart, whatever you do. Mm -hmm. And it's real. It's not more. It's real because we are a real person. We're going through. It's very tough. Yes, it's it's real. The real emotions that we have to, we've had to deal with, and we still have to deal with. Yeah. Um. I, when, when my wife, her name was Sharon really, her, when, when my wife was coming to the, the latter stages, and she wasn't sick for a long time, just a few months basically, and that was it. She had um, stage four cancer where we found out, basically. Okay. Um, but in that time, when she was sick, this, this, this for me is, a, is amazing, it's a miracle, because I took care of her at home. I worked at this time. Only, only our daughter was in school. She's still in school, but I had to do the school runs, do the lunch, everything. do the clothes, do everything in the house, and take care of my wife. I did that all yes. by myself. And there were times when my wife, my wife would wake up every half hour i checked it one night every half hour just wake up and obviously she wakes up i'm gonna wake up and then in a couple of minutes she falls back off to sleep but i can't sleep yeah you're so restless, yeah. believe me to be to to be able to continue to go to work because for that time that period of time i really didn't sleep for like a month there was no sleep that I had yes, but big problem. there was no effect on me in terms of feeling tired I was still eating um, yes you had moments of of, Down. Uh, of, of despair basically despair, because yeah, you, despair, you're seeing yeah. this person that you love in pain just dwindling away in front of your eyes so obviously it's going to have an impact but on you yes, at some point yeah. in time but largely because I just depended and, and depended on, on, on the Lord to do everything for me and to show me everything, to okay, lead me yeah. to do every single thing that I had to do, then I was able to be sustained, like I said, in, in a miraculous way. Because I, didn't, I did not sleep for a month. I don't, it's the first time I'm yeah, sharing yeah. this publicly because people think that I, 
I'm exaggerating. No, it's true. It happens. But it's true. that is the gospel truth. It's true. Quite simply happened to me too. Tell the me. only reason why it's I am true. here alive today is because the Lord has kept me. Amen. And that is no joke. Yes, amen. That's no joke. Amen. The Lord is a true provider. Yes, yes. You know, it raises another aspect of the bereavement concerns. I don't think a lot of people fully realize the effect of these experiences what it has on the caregiver, the principal caregiver. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we talk about the effect it has on us. And, it, and this effect that we are talking about is something which is experienced with almost everybody who has suffered a loss of some kind. Yes, it's and true. when you're in a position as we all have shared here, where we are involved in the caregiving aspect, the toll it has on our lives uh, is a very real matter, which a lot of people overlook because quite rightly and appropriately we focus on on the person who's ill the person yeah, who's yes, passed yes it's true yes but it's really true. and truthfully the, the the um the the principal caregivers suffer immensely yes particularly when it's a widow or a widower mm -hmm. it's true yes in, in, indeed yeah. we have to give god thanks yes, for the support There's something within me that I am very quiet and I keep things mostly inside of me. Sometimes I feel so ashamed to tell people about what I'm going through with the grief that was bothering me. I never tell it to my family because I always with them and with friends, but I try when they ask me how um, I, I say I am fine. But within me, knowing me within me, I was not fine. It's always something there bubbling up within me. Tell them, you know, but don't tell. I, so I keep my grief to myself. It's only now that I come here that I can, you know, talk about certain things. But I always keep my grief to myself. And I always say I most will tell God about what I'm going through. Because sometimes when you go and tell people, they know that they listen. And sometimes they like they don't show the love or something. So I always keep everything the same. But what I do is, like, go to God in prayer and say God is pain in me it's hurting me I go to God and I cry out to God and I praise him and ask him to give me the strength to go through grief of my husband and he does give me the strength but you know sometimes you're going back in the same grief again all the time but I had never discussed it with my family and my friends but they know my husband and they know what I'm going through so I said they know, so it don't make sense discussing it to them. You, you, you know, because yes, somebody is human being. Not everybody like this. Let everybody know what they're going through and everything. But I gratefully thank you for the opportunity I have here this, this evening. I can, you know, speak about it. Grief, but grief is not easy. Well, for me, I was, I was always quiet. Never really spoke a lot. I mean, I have, I have, um, a loving family without without doubt um, mother and father would always be there for me but the strangeness of the situation for me as the Lord led me like I said in every single way was I I never felt the need to put my feelings and emotions on somebody else, right? Um, actually, I actually felt that I needed to guard myself and the children from people who were more, more, ten, you know, more despondent, you know, surrounding us with, with that kind of sorrow and that type of thing. I, I felt that I, I needed to guard my family from from that type of situation. So I, I never put myself out there and I was fine with that. I did, as the scripture said, I let the peace of God guard my heart. And I did that and I guarded my children the same way. So when they looked at me, they saw me standing, but I'm standing in the strength of the Lord, Lord. not my own. 
they saw Amen. me standing and then they took strength from that yes. whereas other people would come around and be more weepy and sad and you know how we do it you know oh Kadir yeah. it's so hard it's gonna be so hard it's gonna be so rough no I did not want that I did not want that around Amen. me or True. the children and I can say that that's that's God inspired God led because my my daughter has not she didn't fall back in school she still did well well don't see exes no she still Praise did God. well you know there was no effect on her in that way I mean obviously she had a moment she would come and cry on daddy's yeah. shoulders you know she missed mommy of course of course and I never shut her down I embraced her and I said you know what mommy's happy though right thing to do you know mommy's happy mommy's in heaven because the lord taught me that that scripture in first thessalonians 4 i think it's verse 13 that's the very last part you know about sorrowing those who sorrow, sorrow. Yeah. as those who have no hope, hope. i'm like yeah but i have a hope, hope. Amen. we have a hope yes amen. she's in heaven with jesus so yes. hey if i love her be happy for her that's right so that's that's how it is for me I, ha I have to agree with you. In, in, in my case, I have to say that because my wife tended to be a rather private individual, um, there was not the inclination necessary to share her circumstances. Um, so I, I, whereas one would not have experienced any necessary overwhelming uh, outpouring of, of uh, empathy and, and that sort of thing um, it was not a situation which would have resonated negatively with me because I don't think that we expected it we didn't put ourselves in a position where it, it would have been forthcoming um, but I, I entirely agree with your experience so, you know you, you have the faith of your faith in God and his uh, his promise and, and his strength and his presence and, 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 and so on um, and you, you live on that but I, I have to agree with you. Um, I, I, we, I don't think it was any negative thing, but there was not that overpowering. In actual fact, um, Pastor Gill and uh, Sister Boyce in particular and, and others detected that there was some degree of bottling up, you know, and that you, 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 yeah. you're pray, you appear to be brave and you're, you're standing. It's true. Uh, yeah. Are you really all right? You know, and it was with, with, their, with their persuasion that I then came forward um, in, the, in a Christian community. In fact, myself emboldened to be able to talk about it and it transformed. Yes. You know, yeah, you were right. able to get it out of your system. It's good to get it out. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm a young man. Yeah, man. <laughs> so obviously, you know, people would 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 wonder. Well, what are you doing now? Um, are you are you involved? Are you are well? How soon do you want to get involved? It's kind of more maybe the mindset of people. Um, you know, getting involved with somebody else type of thing. To be honest with you, I. Obviously, I never imagined that I would be in this situation. I never planned to be have a, to have a thought of being married again. You know, I, this is this is all new territory to me. But I I never was. I've never I've never been pressured by friends or family or anybody really to. You know, nobody asking me, well, uh, you don't think it's enough time now, you're still young, find somebody type of thing. You know, you know how, how people go. But I've never, I've not encountered that. And I guess maybe part of that too is who I surround myself with. Um, I'm not going to get that from my, my family. Um, I'm not going to get that from the few friends that I have. I, I, don't, I don't claim to have many friends. I may know a lot of people, but I don't claim to have many friends. Friends is a very dear word to me. Um, but never once, even not even from acquaintances, that I feel any pressure to, 
you know, I need to find somebody because I'm, I'm still young. Yes, thank God I'm still young. Amen. And Amen. I'm going to remain young for a long time, <laughs> you know. Um, but, well, I, I must say, though, that he has, he has blessed me in that regard, believe it or not, with someone. I didn't see that coming either. But he's blessed me with, with someone that loves and supports me, is just as committed to the Lord, which is very important. Um, you know, so I, <laughs> I sometimes find it quite amazing that it's like, Lord, this could happen to somebody twice. <laughs> You know, to, 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 be, to have somebody in their life that loves them in this way, pretty, this yeah. can happen twice. But I'm just thankful and appreciative. Um, so I, 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 just, I just thank the Lord for, for that, really, okay. for that. You know, to be surrounded with, with love. To be surrounded with love. I, I was hoping that you would go next. Yeah, ain't a problem. <laughs> um, an interesting question. Matthew, I want, to, I want to agree with you, and I want to say that in many regards, um, your experience and your outlook um, is something that um, is not terribly unlike my own. Um, the fact of the matter is that I've now been a widower for eight years. And as Leona indicated just now, the attachment you have to your spouse has a tremendous effect on your life. We have to give God thanks for what he's done for us. He's Amen. comforted yes. us and strengthened us. Yes. But I, I can tell you that there are occasions where I will still have recall of some of the weakest or the most deepest moments of my wife's sorrow during her illness. And those recalls are grievous to me. And I discuss it with people who are very close to me, particularly my family, and my sisters, and my brothers, and others. And um, and they would say to me, you know, but Drew, it is eight years. It's time for you to quote unquote move on. You don't just as Leonzi, you don't just move on. But in reality, if you have someone in your life who truly cares for you and showed you love and affection, I think it can make the world of difference to your outlook. Love is, is important. Yes, yes. And um, I think that, as I said, it's been eight years. Um, I don't want to say that I would have been a happier man had I been married, but the fact is that I, I have not been able to be remarried. And um, yes, to answer the question di directly, yes, I, I have had pressure of some kind from people who, whether they be just acquaintances or friends, and indeed family, who said, you know, um, you know, well, you know, you you haven't moved on, and uh, we are concerned. You know, um, what does it do for you? And and and, and, and there's reality to that. You know, I, I, I am a person who, is, who enjoys cooking. I enjoy, you know, those domestic chores. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I find it difficult to do it for me. Yeah. Oh, okay. If I were doing it for you, I would pour my heart into it. Right. And I'm sure I guarantee you'll like it. But for me to do it for me, it's, it's difficult. And therefore, that, in that way, companionship is important. But it's got to be the right person. And maybe I can just say in summary to the question that 
I have not been able to perceive God's will or selection at the present moment. But yes, there has been pressure, there has been suggestions. Okay. Yeah, but like, you know, my marriage is next going into two years September, so, so my husband is still in my heart. I mm. dream about him. I didn't ever put myself there, anybody coming there, nonsense talking. <laughs> that you lonely or you young. No, no, no. Cause he, he's still within my heart. And I, I, I'm looking for that. I, I don't know later on what will happen. But through all my husband now is like, I depend upon God. I call him God my father. I call him God everything to me now. I get up during the night anytime and I just raise my hand and give God praise and thanks. You know, you go through things. But when you call upon God, he gives you that strength to go through that valley. He gives you that strength. I said, the Lord is my shepherd. And I can say that God is my shepherd. You know, I said, my husband, that I hold on more to God. Even though, you know, so I don't really put on my clothes and walk my back zipper. I put it half in. There's nobody in the house to zip it up. I walk in. If I see somebody, I say, I pull up my zip. Yes, you miss you, 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 I miss him. But I'm not just going up because I miss my husband. I'm going to throw myself to any, any. But pressure in these days, you've got to be very careful what you're picking up out there. Because some people see you got this and got them just come in and life for what you have. You know? So you got to be careful. So right now, God is everything to me right now. Right now, he's everything to me. And that's the most thing that matters to me. When my husband was, was sick, he said, you know something, you got to move on with your life. I said, what nonsense you talking, move on with my life. But he know with him here that he was dying. But I, I couldn't see it, but he know. But there's no way I moved on with my life. I said, no, but I thank God. I thank God. I thank God for the strength he gives me. And I think nobody can force me to go and do something that you don't want to do. God will got to come to me and tell me, you know, but I'm not looking. I still go to my mom and my husband. I love my husband still. Thank God. That, that's fine. Then. There's no, Amen. No more Amen. To, um, Amen. Your, your situation, uh, the wife said the same thing to me, you know, my wife said the same thing to me. You, you're young, move on. I was like, woman, what are you telling me? Oh, she, she knows. You, you know, and that was my reaction as well, but here I am now today in a different circumstance. Yeah. Which I didn't expect. All right. You know, Same thing, me too. Just as, just as the Lord worked it out, I did not expect this. True. Yeah. Cause I always tell my husband we can live to get old age. Yep. And we cruise together. It's his birthday, gone for his birthday. He gone for mine. We travel. We enjoy it. We enjoy life. Life made to enjoy. But yeah. someday, boy, we said better off for worse. <laughs> live it in the hands of the Lord. Oh, we live it in God's hand. God is a good God. I become more close to my sisters and my brothers and they would call them and encourage them and they would encourage me. But I never had kids for my husband. He had kids, I had my own and he had his own, but they're not living in Barbados, they're living overseas. But right now I just, with the help of God, giving me strength to do what I could do because he's not there to like support me or to help me. But I try to get along because, you know, it is a hard time that we're going through because of the COVID. But through it all, I'm just getting through with the help of God. Because certain things that I'm not working, definitely at this moment. But through it all, God is there for me. He said he will never, never leave me nor forsake me. And I prove, proving that every day. And I have a good relationship with my family on mother's side. Very good relationship. I'm friends out there. So... I give God praise and thanks. And friends up there, please, when you're going through this, just put your trust in God. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Trust in the Lord at all time. Not sometimes, all time. Praise God. You know, I, I have a similar experience in that um, my three sons are all fully grown young men. And um, I have an extremely good relationship with them. And they have been there for me, um, with their, despite their various responsibilities uh, and their own family life. They, they are there for me. They try to ensure that I have the opportunity to interact with my grandchildren. And that, 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 that is a special joy. And I give God thanks for that. Um, 
other than that, it has been, I have to give God thanks. Amen. I have to give God thanks for my health, not only my physical health, but my mental health. I give God thanks for my children and those people who play a, an extremely important yes. part in my life in sustaining me. I, I have so much to, uh, to give God thanks for. And, um, you know, I, 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 I manage through His grace. Amen. That's right. It's not always been easy, mm -hmm. but um, He has provided. He's Praise always been God. there for Praise me. Praise um, it's as I said, it's been eight years and, and counting, and uh, I give him the glory and I give him the praise, amen. Well, like I said in the beginning, everything for me is still simple, so everyday life is simple. I still fully trust that my father tells me what to do, when to do it when to give my daughter a hug and a kiss out of the blue you know when to just tell her I love you when to take her out the house when to give her some sauce when she's thinking about it you know that's an interesting story <laughs> so so he's helped me to be a good father amen and I I can't, I can't do it without him. True. And you know, and he, he's, he's, he's strategically and systematically surrounded me with support and love. Amen. But after ensuring that he's taught me that he is my strength, he is my all in all. All in all. Amen. So regardless of who mm -hmm. comes or who goes now. My God, my Father, Amen. is the one that keeps me. Praise God. And you know, well, that is the that's the advice that I would give to anybody going through any kind of bereavement, even if it's not just spouse, any kind of bereavement. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you acknowledge Him in all your Everything, ways, yes. and He you will know. direct right. your path. Amen. I am a living example. We all are, are living, example. living examples of that, of His goodness, of His grace, of His love. Mm -hmm. That is why we are yes. here. And if you're Thank going God. through this, then you need to trust in, in Jesus. Amen. And He will keep you. Amen. God is good. God is good. God is good. He is good. I thank God for my son. He support me very well. I have fifth grandchildren, three, three girls now, and boys there. But my son was there for me till now. And I thank God for the love. He's my first son that he poured upon me. And it's not that I cry when he see the help that he going through the battle too. But he's there for his mommy. And I, I say, Lord, I thank you for him, for putting him there for me, you know, to help me. In all, in all, I give God thanks. My brother's here, my brother Matthew. You. I thank God that we could come here and encourage you when it's going through what we are going through. Don't give up. Just call upon God and he'll be there for you. God is a good God and he's not mocked. He's real. People today think that God mocked, but let me tell you, God is real and depend upon the blood. I thank God upon the night when I sleep in that room by myself. I say, Lord, cover my house under the blood inside, outside, and protect me. Call my warning. This will protect me because there's no one there with me at the moment. My grandchildren are always traveling. But I thank God for life. So because he lives, we can face tomorrow. No matter what battle, we can face tomorrow. So in everything, we give God praise and thanks. God bless. Well, God is my all in all. And I, my advice to everyone, because there's one thing that is certain that we will one day be called home and we hope that home is in heaven Amen. and uh, there's only one true God and you can depend on him no matter what the circumstances is give God thanks yes. walk in faith and when you have to taste death be strong in the faith that God is good and he will support you
Good evening. After such a riveting conversation between Leona, Matthew, and Drew, indeed, I sat and I, I heard, I, I listened, and I learned a lot. And my name is Gloria Keynes, and my husband was Michael Keynes. We were married for 35 years and he passed away five years ago. Now I have something in my hand right here. And from where you might be, it looks like just a piece of wood. But a more careful examination, you will recognize that there are two pieces of wood. And even closer examination will see, you will see that there is writing on either side of the wood. So I'll read what is on the first side. Well, one side. It says, Matthew chapter 19, verse 5 and 6. And it has the word Michael. On the opposite side, it says, Marriage Unlimited, Gloria. 28th of April 2012. Now this piece of wood was used in the year 2012 when Michael and myself had attended a marriage enrichment seminar. This was sponsored by, in fact the guest speaker was Don Hamilton of Trinidad and Tobago. And this piece of wood was used to show an example of what is recorded in Matthew chapter 19, and I read. And he answered and said to them, Have you not read that he made them at the beginning male, female? And said, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. I had found this piece of wood after my husband had passed away. I was going through his bedside drawer and needless to say, I started one big bawling because it reminded me of him. It showed me that, yes, we were joined together. And after I was able to compose myself, I said to the Lord, being very cheeky, Lord, you know, after we had spent all this time seeking to perfect this one flesh, how am I able to make it? How can I cope when part of me has been torn by death and separation? Well, the Lord gave me a very interesting answer, but I'm not going to tell you the answer just yet. I want you to continue to listen. And by the end of our dis discussion today, you will get the answer. So let's get to the topic at hand. Journeying through widowhood and widowerhood. The Oxford Students Dictionary defines widow as a woman whose husband is dead and who has not married again. And the widower is a man whose wife is dead, who has not married again. Now, when it says widowhood, that hood there is just telling us that it's a state of being. What about the word journey? Journey refers to going from one place to another. It speaks of movement, of traveling. And this, this evening, if you are a widower, or a widow like myself, the journey has already begun. 
This journey, to tell you the truth, is not one that I would have chosen for myself, just like the others who had spoken before me. But a typical journey, when we embark on it, there can be lots of uncertainty. At times, it can be rough. At times, it can be smooth. But it's vital that throughout a journey that we understand that we cannot make it on our own. And yes, listeners, viewers, I recognized that the journey through widowhood would not be one that I could make on my own. In fact, if I had anything to say to you this evening, and just like as the others were saying, the most vital, the most important, the key to this journey has been knowing the Lord Jesus as my Lord and Savior. You see, I met Jesus when I was only 13 years old, and he has led my life. He was the one who allowed me to meet my husband. We met in the, the country of St. Vincent at a Christian camp, and he is from Trinidad. The Lord brought us together. And the Lord took me even through our time of marriage. But you know what? The turbulent time came. <laughs> oh boy, it was that morning, the day I woke up and I recognized, you know, well, I have to say goodbye, farewell to the one that has been my companion for over 35 years. Yes, we were married at 35 years, but we were corresponding years before that, before we got married. We were corresponding using tapes. In those days, we had cassette tapes and through letter writing and the odd phone call here and there. But I want to say that I recognized that I could not make it through that day. And I, and, I, and I had started to envision just seeing the coffin going down. And I said to the Lord, Lord, I cannot do this alone. I cannot do this by myself. I woke up early that morning and I had known the Lord Jesus as my savior. But now I was experiencing him as a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He was right there. And that morning I got up and I, and I went into the living room. Yes, family and friends had come to, to be with me and with the children. We have two children together. And I recognized that I needed the Lord. And the Lord just began to minister to me. And I know the theologians will say, oh, you're taking scripture out of context. But you know what? <laughs> it was my context. I needed more than just well wishes. I needed the Lord. I needed the word from the Lord. And this is what the, the Lord had, had just ministered in my heart. As I was with Michael, I will be with you. Sounds familiar? Yes. Joshua chapter 1. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of a good courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And then the reflection in John chapter 14, which says, let not your heart be troubled, 
neither let it be afraid. And so for such a turbulent time in my life, I want you to know that the Lord took me through that occasion. And yes, it was difficult, but the words that he shared with me, let not your heart be troubled, don't be afraid, be courageous, they kept coming back to me over and over. And guess what? Those were the words that have kept me all through this journey so far. And I know that they're going to keep me as we go on. Psalm 119 said, Thy word is a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. The word of God is vital. Hearing from God is key in this journey. It's not enough just to have people, well-wishers, and people sharing their condolences. Yes, it's good to have that encouragement, but it's the Word of God that is able to keep. It is the Word of God that kept me. Yes, I knew Him as Savior, I am knowing him as a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I remember my time of devotion in the morning took on a different light. I would spend that time with the Lord, not only speaking to him, but listening to his word. You know why? Because I recognized that I could not make it unless I had a word from the Lord, unless he encouraged my heart. And I would, I would, I would what they call journal. That helped me also. I would write down the scripture. I would write down the response of it to my heart. And that was one of the things that also kept me through reading God's Word, meditating on God's Word, recording God's Word, allowing it to, seek, to sink deep and in my heart. I remember as I look in God's Word, when Jesus was about to depart, he spoke to his disciples. And it's recorded in St. John chapter 14 verse 25 to 27 and it says Jesus said these things I have spoken to you while being present with you but the helper the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all the things that I have said to you peace I leave with you my peace I give you not as the world gives, do I give. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Yes, I had the support of my pastors, my pastors, their wives, members of the marriage enrichment class at the time, they surrounded me and they encouraged me. They covered me as well. I had the prayers of the saints. I knew they were praying for me. But I needed to draw closer to the Lord. I needed to dig in deeper. I needed to lean in further. Yes, I had known the Lord for all those years. But this journey is one with a difference. Having been with my husband for 35 years, that's not a little time. In fact, we lived in Antigua for our first 11 years. And it was during that time that we bonded together. We didn't have any relatives there that we could go and visit or that would come over. So we spent a lot of time and our relationship had been built. 
in a very close way. I remember as I listened in the, the conversation, I recognized that it is possible that sometimes we can become anxious at the passing of a loved one. Sometimes our concerns can be about finances and the provision for the children. I remember my brother said that. How do I look after the children? You know? And in some situations, maybe that spouse, your husband, your wife that has gone on, that person was a provider at least so we call the person. And you're wondering, how am I going to make it? How am I going to make ends meet? Is the money I'm making going to be enough? Well, the Lord reminded me that yes, our spouse is there. They're partner with it, partnering with us to see that the bills are paid and, and to see that the necessary things are purchased and the, that the children don't go hungry. But the truth is that our real provider is God. He is the one who provides for us. As I reflect on Psalm 37 and verse 25, it says, the psalmist says, I have been young, and now I'm old. Yet, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants, nor his seed begging for bread. You know why? Because God is a provider. Psalm 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He is the one. He causes us to lie down in green pastures. He restores our soul. He leads us in the paths of righteousness. <laughs> Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Yes. With the, the passing of the loved one, you do experience the valley of the shadow of death. But the psalmist went on to say, the Lord is with me. His rod, his staff, they comfort me. And yes, this evening, if you are experiencing a similar situation, if you are thinking, how am I going to manage in terms of finances, God or provider, he is there for us. And if you're wondering, how am I going to make it in this valley of the shadow of death? He is with you. He is with me. He is with us. And he will take us through. As a provider, Jesus was talking to his disciples and he said to them, Do not worry about food or clothing. He reminded them that the ravens, the birds, they don't sow, they don't reap, they don't store up food, but God provides for them. Jesus reminded them, look at the lilies. <laughs> they don't go out and sow or, or spin or make garments, but God clothes them. And in such a way that they are beautifully adorned. Yes, our God is a provider. He provided for me. He is providing for me. And if he has been doing it for me, he is also able to do it for you. At the time of my husband's passing, our daughter was in university overseas. And I too was part of a study program. The Lord provided miraculously. And he took us through the journey. 
in such a way that our needs were met, our financial situations were catered for. Yes, the Lord is a provider. I want to say to you as well, what helped me was putting my confidence and trust in the Lord. Yes, you heard it from my sister and my brothers as they spoke as well. I noticed that the same trend went through all of their conversations. At every, almost every sentence, they kept saying, the Lord was there, the Lord was there, the Lord was there, the Lord helped me. And I can testify as well that he has helped me. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path or he will make your path straight. You know, my trust is in the Lord. The same God who brought us together <laughs> is the same God who is in control. Yes, I would not have chosen this journey for myself or for anyone else. But I want to say that our God can be trusted. He can be trusted to know that whatever is best for me, I might think the best thing for me is to have my husband by my side. <laughs> I, I would declare that. But you know what? Beyond that, I trust God to know me. He knows me better than I know myself. And so I have that little confidence, that quiet trust in him that... He knows what he's doing. He has a plan. He has a purpose. And my God do, does all things well. He doesn't ever make a mistake. Yes, I have heard those things over and over. But you know what? I have been proving them even in this journey on a daily basis. God can be trusted. God has a plan for my life. He has a plan for your life. Even in your situation of loss and pain. Jeremiah says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. It doesn't seem that way, does it? <laughs> it seems as though that when our loved one is taken away from us, like, <laughs> and I, I will tell you, the enemy would come from time to time and buffet us and buffet me and would say to me, you are abandoned. You don't have a husband anymore. He would come and say to me, and remember the word of God says, he's a liar. You're being punished. Something you did in your life that has caused your husband to be taken away from you. <laughs> no, 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 no. The Lord reminded me that he takes his children home. And when my husband has left, had left this life, he went to be with the Lord. Blessed or good is the time when the saint goes to be with the Lord. And so my trust is in God. The same way he took care of me while my husband was alive is the same God who is able to take me through in this journey.
he can be trusted. He has a purpose. He has a plan. I remember close around the time when my husband had passed, Reverend Drayton made the statement, <laughs> don't ask why, ask what. Don't spend your time asking, but why, why, Lord, and why me, and why this? Rather ask, what would you have me to do, Lord? What are your plans for my life? That's not an easy, an easy thing to comprehend. Because as human beings, yeah, we like to know that we're in control and that we, have, we know everything. But no. We don't. Our God, he is the one who has the greater picture. He knows everything. He knows what he wants to accomplish in my life. And so my desire is to find out what it is. Why was I left here? Why am I remaining? And God has been ministering to me in that regard. So God has a purpose. He can be trusted to know what is best for us. He loves us. And on this journey, we can have the quiet confidence that everything will be all right. Amen. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. So he's a provider. One of the other things I would like also to share is the fact that in this journey, we have to be thankful. First Thessalonians chapter 5 says, in everything, give thanks. And you know what? Every day, I give God thanks for life, for being here, and understanding that he is still with me. There are things, there are blessings, there are values that my husband has contributed in my life that has now helped me even on this journey. And for that, I say, Lord, I thank you. It is easy to complain and say, yes, why Lord and, and, and why me? But there are things that we can be thankful for. Instead of looking at what I don't have, I look at who I have. The blessings of the Lord, the presence of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord. As I come almost to a close, I want to say to us, and this has helped me a lot, hope in God. We can hope in God to see our loved ones again. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, in 2 Samuel chapter 12, sorry, 22 to 23, it reads, like many of us, Sorry, it means we held out for our loved ones. Sorry, that's not what it reads. <laughs> it says, the While the child was alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, who can tell whether the Lord will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back? I shall go to him, but he shall not come to me. And this is the psalmist David. He never witnessed or was in the dispensation as we are in right now with the fact that Jesus Christ has risen to testify to the understanding that, yes, because Jesus Christ rose from the dead, we have a hope that goes beyond the grave. We have that confidence 
that it is possible to be with our loved ones once more. And I want to read the portion of scripture in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 13 to 18. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven like a shout. And the voice of the archangel with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise again, will rise first, sorry. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. And the final verse 18 says, Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Losing a loved one, saying farewell to a spouse is not an easy undergoing. The journey is by no means to be taken lightly. In fact, it is important that we grieve. Don't be afraid to cry <laughs> and bawl and express your emotions because the sorrow we feel with their absence is real. But a greater reality is this. There's hope in God. There's a hope that one day we will be with the Lord and we will see our loved ones again. Be comforted, my brother. Be comforted, my sister. Though the journey be rough, it might be long, it might be short. Know for certainty those words, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God promises that. And when God makes a promise, <laughs> he keeps it. He is with me. He is with you as we continue in this journey. Be comforted, my sister, my brother, knowing that all is well. Keep trust in the Lord. And one last thing I wanted to mention, and that is that in the midst of our grieving, in the midst of seeking the Lord and spending time with Him, make yourself available to be used of Him. Be of comfort to someone else. Pray about it. Don't rush into it. But the Lord, oh, make, that, make that way that God can still use you even in the midst of your grief. Because as we share with others, that healing comes to us. And it's not really all about ourselves. Don't continue in self-pity, you know. Yes, you feel the pain, but beyond that, allow the Lord to use you as a vessel. Thank you for listening. I trust that you have learned something, and I want to encourage you with those words. 
Well, you know what? I didn't forget. When I asked the Lord, how am I going to manage, Lord, and cope? After you have helped me to be so close to this person, and now my heart is torn and riveting within me. <laughs> Guess what he said? The Lord said to me, I was the glue that kept you together. So if one side has been removed... <laughs> the glue is still attached to the other. In other words, I am still with you as the glue. And not only that, I as the glue am the one who is here to help you buffet the turbulence and the challenges and the difficulty because I am a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Blessings, one and all. Thank you. We thank God for this time that we have spent in his presence. And I trust that something that has been shared this evening, that it would have been of a tremendous blessing and a source of comfort to those who are going through this journey of widow or widowhood. We certainly want to thank our sister Gloria Keynes for sharing so openly with us. And we want to thank those who presented, those who had the conversation before her, our brother Matthew, brother Drew, and a sister Leona. Indeed, we are appreciative of all that they have shared. And it is our desire that you who are going through this journey would have received some encouragement and help along the way. We know that this journey cannot be taken by yourself, but you need God. You need the Holy Spirit. You need a relationship with the Lord Jesus as has been shared. And we want to ask if there anyone, if there is anyone out there who do not know Jesus as Savior, you do not know him in a personal way, but you would like this evening to say, I would like to receive Christ into my heart so that I too can know him and know the comfort of the Holy Spirit. If you are there and you would like to have Jesus and to know him, I implore you this evening, as we bow our hearts together in his presence, that you bow with us and you repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, as my Lord. I confess that I cannot take this journey alone. I need you, O oh God. I accept Jesus. I ask you to cleanse my heart from every sin that I've ever committed. Wash me in your precious blood. Help me to experience your love and your peace. I declare that you are my Lord and my Savior and my Shepherd who will go with me through this journey in Jesus' name. So Father, I pray for anyone out there this evening who is going through this journey of bereavement and widowhood, widowerhood, Lord, I pray that they will sense your comfort and your peace and that they will know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you are with them and you will never leave them or forsake them. So I pray a blessing upon them in the name of Jesus. And we give you thanks and we give you praise. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage anyone who would like to have the help of the bereavement support group you can 
do um, go to the WhatsApp of the People's Cathedral, 429-2145, and you can indicate that you need us to help you, and we will be in contact with you. God bless you, and have a great week in the name of the Lord.